you watch this channel, you know I've been mostly a cannon shooter for the last few years now, but I've had a bit of an itch that I just couldn't scratch with any of the cannons. Now, the Fuji X-H2S might be the answer to what I've been looking for. We've been in Hawaii for two weeks, which is kind of a perfect way to test out a new camera. There are definitely days where the weight of the R5 starts to hurt my back, especially the lenses are enormous. The fact that I could do something similar with this smaller, lighter body, and especially these smaller, lighter lenses, was really exciting to me, and of course, those Fuji colors. First of all, what is this camera? Why would I be interested in it? So this is the first of Fuji's cameras to feature their X-Trans 5 sensor. Fuji always has the same sensor across their whole lineup, so you're gonna get pretty similar image results from each generation, and this is a bit of a jump forward. This APS-C sensor, is stacked, meaning that it can read the data off of it much faster. That has some implications, both in terms of frames per second when you're shooting in burst modes, high speed video frame rates, and image quality overall. Well, I've been testing this. I've been thinking of it as an alternative to the Canon R6 or the Sony a7 IV. It's in the same kind of price range as those two other cameras. The smaller sensor has a different set of compromises, so less blurry backgrounds, but at the same time, you get lighter, more affordable, and equally sharp lenses. The lenses I had with me here are the 18 to 55, 2.8 to 4.0, which I usually never use a variable aperture lens like that. This is a Fuji kit lens, but I was excited about it because it's super small. That variable aperture is starting at 2.8, which is really fast. And I've heard that it's really sharp. Turns out it is. Like this is better than a kit lens and I totally could use this for a lot of things. I really enjoyed this lens. And the other one is the 16 millimeter 1.4 prime lens. Now this definitely felt more premium. Like I love that you can flipped manual focus like this. But okay, if anybody that's used a Fuji, they already know this. Like the lenses are really compact, the design's great, and they're all pretty good. I think basically Fuji is hitting the mid-range perfectly. Like they may not have the super high-end level that Canon or Sony have right now, but everything is much more reasonably priced and performs very well for that price. Lenses are in an interesting place. And I think right now both Fuji and Sony are just beating Canon at this because they have some nice small compact options that are really high quality. Canon needs to get on this. All the good stuff is large and super expensive. Testing the X-H2S, I realized I haven't actually reviewed a Fuji camera on YouTube since 2011, <laughs> when I reviewed the original X100 with the Camera Store TV. If I could take this on a trip, I might be able to use some of the photos when I come Oh, home. absolutely. It'd be great, like scouting locations and stuff exactly. like that as well. One of the biggest things for me when I'm choosing a camera is the way it deals with colors. That's a lot of the reason that I shoot Canon. And Fuji does things really differently in a good way. Anytime I'm talking about color from a camera, I wanna be really clear by what I mean because raw images can be processed to look many different ways. This is the JPEG processing that happens inside of the X-H2S. You can see it looks like a film filter. It's a film emulation. But of course, raw images can be pushed and pulled in a million different ways. So let's look at some examples here. This is the Canon R5. And this is the Fuji X-H2S. I've kind of tried to match them quickly. I didn't do anything technical to get them exactly the same, but just flipping back and forth, you get a little sense of the difference. I'll zoom in. I've normalized the megapixels, so now they're both around the 25 that the X-H2S shoots on. And you can see in this case, it actually looks a little bit sharper. These lenses don't match. This isn't my sharpest Canon lens here, but you can just get a sense that like, at any usable size, the quality is pretty comparable here. Even if we zoom way in, there isn't a huge difference in terms of things like noise. Honestly, I think the lenses are making a bigger difference here than the cameras. We did take a bunch of low light shots and they turned out great. I don't think this is the best camera in the world for it, but it definitely worked for it. So if you're just a hobbyist like I am when it comes to night photography, it really does perform well. And as a reminder of the resolution difference between 25 megapixels and 50, this is the R5 and this is the Fuji. So if you're printing big or massively cropping, that's why you want the megapixels. So a big thing I'm attracted to here is being able to shoot JPEGs and have them look great. So here is an example of, this is what the raw image looks like, and this is how the Fuji processes it. You can kind of get a sense of that film emulation that it's applying. And I mean, I really like this. This is something that I might do if I was applying a filter for Instagram. I totally think this color processing is passable. So much of the reason I don't shoot JPEG is because often you just lose a lot of detail, but with the Fuji here, you are able to recover 
just about as much of it by using their DR settings. I'm usually in DR400 whenever possible. And even in examples that it might usually be clipping, it's holding onto the highlights pretty well. One thing I'd complain about though, is that it does let the whites go all the way up to 100%. So if I turn on my clipping checker here, I can see that these have clipped. And I mean, this is supposed to be film emulation, film would never clip. So I would rather than make the choice to just not ever let anything become pure white. I think that would totally be feasible, but you can see as I flip through, there's a bunch here that are clipped white. That is not what film looks like. So I would still always prefer to bring that down. In some of the examples here, the colors really do kind of feel like film, but in others, I kind of wish it would go a little bit further. For example, if I was to apply my Lightroom presets, you can see they are definitely still processing it more heavily than Fuji does out of camera. I think that my only complaint here is I don't love how Fuji has structured some of this color stuff. So I love that it's like called film emulation. They have a bunch of films on it, but most people only seem to end up using two of them, which are the classic Chrome and classic Neg. And most people seem to also be getting their recipes for how they want to design these colors from one website, Fuji X Weekly, which they're doing a great job. Like, I love that they exist, but the way that they structure their color designs is a little bit weird to me. So they'll include things like how much noise reduction is supposed to be in it or what the dynamic range should be set to. And to me, those are like personal decisions about how you shoot photography. Like I'm always gonna turn up my dynamic range and want it at maximum. So that's not like part of getting a Portra 400 look, which his presets don't, to me, look anything like what he names them. So if you'd like to know the recipe I've been using on most of this trip, here it is. Uh, I just kind of left it on this most of the time. This is what a lot of my JPEGs were in. But I think this will be an evolving thing and I still have to understand what some of the settings do before I really know how to get the most out of a Fuji. Fuji has gone out of their way to make this a serious hybrid camera. So they've packed a ton of new video features in there, including 4K, 120 frames per second, and a whole new version of F-Log. It's F-Log 2 with more dynamic range. So we're gonna be testing out some of those video features in a second. One cool thing is it also features webcam mode. So if you want some really high quality video when you're streaming or in a conference call, you can just plug the XH2S right into your computer. So if you're somebody that really cares about image quality, you're also gonna care about the sponsor of today's video, and that's Rivers. Explaining the benefits is really simple. Riverside is just the best way to capture a conversation over the internet between multiple computers. It's what I use now to record all of my podcasts because it's just way more stable than anything I tried in the past. So you don't have to worry about you or your guests computer crashing or having unreliable internet because it's uploading full quality video as you are recording it. So even if lightning strikes, you've still got that high quality video and audio recording up in the cloud. When you're done recording, you can download either WAVE audio files of you and your guests or also HD or 4K video files and then edit them separately on a multi-track so you've got complete flexibility in how you deal with it. It is really the professional way to be able to work with files afterwards. To try it out, hit the link in the description below and you're gonna get 15% off any membership plan or just use offer code Stallman. Easy to remember, offer code Stallman, 15% off. Go try them today. Thanks again to Riverside for sponsoring this video. Along with all this gorgeous Hawaii footage, we also shot some tests in studio side by side with the Canon R5. What I really wanted to see is the detail, the color reproduction, and its dynamic range. So next to the Canon R5 here, when correctly exposed, you can get them to look pretty similar. This is using Fuji's new F-Log2 LUT, and the R5 is being transformed with one of my Canon conversion LUTs, and you can kind of match them pretty closely here, which is great news, it means F-Log2 is closer to a professional quality cinema log profile. If we zoom into 100%, both look great. I think there's actually a little more sharpness in the Fuji. I'm not sure if this is the lensing. Obviously they don't match here, so not all the variables are being controlled for, but it does show you're not giving up any sharpness choosing Fuji over the Canon here. If we look at what overexposure looks like, this is three stops over on the Fuji. And if we want to bring it down, the F-Log2 recovers very nicely, especially considering this is quite overexposed. And if you look at Canon using C-Log3 in a similar amount of overexposure, we bring it down. I actually find it quite a bit harder to get it back to neutral. The blacks want to kind of clip down in the black. So I've always found this about C-Log3, it's not as easy to recover as some other log profiles. But looking at them side by side, there isn't some big advantage to the Canon, which is full frame and a much more expensive camera. So that's great news. I think a lot of the things that speak to the quality of these cameras in terms of dynamic range is just how the sensors deal with the data that they're given. Yeah. 
Now the video performance of the X-H2S is outstanding. The biggest thing, the best thing that they did is they allowed it to shoot in open gate, which right now I'm shooting on the Canon R5 and it's, it can't do that. Meaning that I have to crop into the sensor all the time when I'm shooting video. It's always 16 by nine, even though the sensor is four by six. So there is a lot of dead space not being utilized. On the Fuji, I can shoot in the three by two aspect ratio at 6.2 K. So I've got all this extra resolution and I can crop the top and bottom of the frame so helpful. I need that on every camera, especially if you ever want to shoot anamorphic, then you don't get the crazy sliver stretch that you'd get if you shoot on a 16 by nine sensor with anamorphic lenses. If you're somebody that worries about your camera overheating, Fuji's got your back. They have already released a small accessory that is a fan that just screws onto the back of your camera. On one hand, this is great news because it means they're treating this like a real video camera because any serious dedicated video camera does have a fan inside to keep things cool if necessary. But the better news is that I never needed this the whole time I was on a tropical island shooting video for weeks, it never overheated. I did get a heat warning one time and it went away on its own, but I never actually had to use the fan. I could just keep shooting, even in 6.2K. One place that Fuji has traditionally struggled to keep up is autofocus. Like it was good enough for sure, but not the best, like clearly not the best. On the X-H2S, it actually feels really competitive with my Canon, like the R5, and the H2S, I was shooting the same photo side by side and they're both tracking faces very similarly and actually even smaller in frame on the Fuji. Like it could see people further away than the R5. In the end, the reliability of both were similar, but Fuji has absolutely caught up here. They are not behind in the focus game. Another highlight is its shooting speeds. Like in burst mode, it can shoot raw up to 40 frames per second. Is that not even right. I mean, it's a setting on here. I'm not shooting sports, so I'm not the expert on this, but it's amazing that it can do any of this. Looking at the usability of the body design, it's excellent. It's very good. In some ways better than Canon, in other ways worse. So one of the downsides actually that drove me crazy for video mode is the button to start recording is way smaller and harder to find than the ISO button that's right beside it. So even though I've been on this for two weeks now, I'm still pressing the ISO button to try to start recording. And then when the ISO menu is open, pressing the record button immediately after doesn't record. So you can end up missing the moment. There was also something kind of awkward about how you'd select focus points. So the joystick feels good, like physically it's well made, but um, I just find it a little cumbersome to move around. And I'd often notice that it had moved when I didn't expect it to. Maybe there's just a setting that I'm not using correctly, but um, I just didn't feel like I had full control over where that focus point is gonna be because it had a bit of a mind of its own. But this dial on top is very well done. It's basically just full of a ton of custom modes, which are fully adaptable. They can be for photo or video. You can save them however you like. Um, and I put most of them to different video modes and that's, I think, really a smart way to do it so that you can quickly jump between slow motion or F-Log2 or baked in colors. And that's how I was using it. And it was really useful. Overall, the button layout and feel is excellent, on par with Canon and Sony, but a easier menu system than Sony. A weird thing about the ISO that I think Fuji should explain better out of the box is how it relates to the dynamic range. So if you set it to DR400, which is how I always want the most dynamic range, it's how I'm going to shoot. It needs to be at at least ISO 640. Now, this is something you're used to in the video world. If I'm shooting on a C70 or an Arri Alexa, you've got to set it to a specific ISO to get the most dynamic range but you're not used to doing that when it comes to stills. And I actually don't know if that relationship holds up in the raw photos. Like if I shoot at ISO 100 in raw, do I lose dynamic range? Can you tell me in the comments? Somebody, somebody must know. And why isn't this happening on Canon or Sony? Like this must be something other cameras are encountering. Why is Fuji so different? If you want a much better idea of what the colors look like straight out of the X-H2S, check out my recent DJI RS3 Pro review. Unless otherwise noted, all of that footage, all the A-roll and everything is just directly out of the camera. I had to adjust a few exposure settings here and there, but there's no LUTs, no presets, no filters. That's just what the Fuji looks like. So watch that video next. I'll see you over there, guys. Okay, so I just dropped my phone in the sand and discovered that it sorts out which sand is magnetic. See all the black stuff sticks around the magnetic ring there? That's cool.